do anything just to see you. To behold you as my king, I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. I want to be where to be where you are. Lord, if I find favor. Lord, if I find favor in, find favor in your sight. Lord, please. Lord, please. Hear my heart cry.
follow with this one song is in my spirit this morning it's a worship song as well Lord your name is holy Lord your name is holy holy Lord 
Your name is holy, Lord. Your name is holy, holy, Lord. I love you, Lord. I magnify and praise your holy name i love you lord i love you lord i magnify and praise your holy name holy Lord your name is holy holy Lord your name is holy Lord your name is holy Holy Lord, I love you, Lord. I magnify and praise your holy name. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I magnify and praise your holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, give God some praise in here today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I magnify your greatness. You're so holy, Jesus. You're holy, you're so holy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, when you spend time in the presence, God will birth songs in your spirit to cause you to just worship Him. Songs of aspiration, songs of inspiration, songs of encouragement that would draw you into His presence. And that's what we need to be every day is in the presence of the Lord. Because in His presence, it's the fullness of joy. That's what the word tells us. Amen. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I'm trying to quit that song just in my spirit. I enter the holy of holy. I enter by the blood of the Lord. I enter to worship you only. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, one thing about God, He's given us the access. We have the right to enter in by the blood of the Lamb into His holy presence. He's holy. Lord, you're so holy. He's so holy. And when you get a revelation of how holy God is, it provokes you to worship it provokes you to bow down in his presence with confidence knowing that he's right there waiting on you to come into his presence that's why I don't mind worshiping him because worship it sets my day in motion it shifts the atmosphere it sets the atmosphere 
So we worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. I enter the holies of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship I am. So let the way cover us let the light of your river flow let the truth of your kingdom reign in us let the way of your glory let the weight of your glory cover us let the life of your river flow let the truth of your kingdom reign in us let the life of your river flow 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 see i'm talking about the life of his river that that means the anointing see when you get a revelation that the life of the river is the anointing you ask god let the life of your river let it flow and god don't mind letting it flow in you as a channel to go to somebody else to bring healing and deliverance so I worship you Lord I worship you great I am I worship you Lord I worship Jehovah God I worship my healer I worship my provider. He is the great I am. I worship you, Lord. See, I don't know what you're talking about. If you need God to do something for you, you don't mind worshiping him. I worship you, Lord. I worship the I am. I worship great I am. I worship I am. I worship you, Lord. Let your glory fall in this room. I worship you, Lord. Come and fill our hearts, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. I want you to show up in my situation. I want you to show up in my children's life. I want you to show up in my generation, Jesus. Somebody needs a breakthrough today. Somebody needs you to be a deliverer. If you show up, come. Feel 
never gonna change I worship you I worship you Lord I worship you I worship you Lord I worship you I'm not in a hurry God to make you quit God what you're doing you're doing something in this hour God release your glory God release your healing power release your presence somebody needs you God right now somebody needs you God Lord I worship you come on worship him come on and worship I ain't gonna quit till you worship him come on and worship him come on and worship him Oh Lord, oh Lord. See, we don't sing praises. We didn't got excited, but when it comes to worship, we want to get quiet on God. See, you don't realize it's the worship that provokes God. It's the worship calls God to get off His throne. It's the worship that calls God to show up in your life to bring deliverance. God, we worship you. God, we worship you. God, we worship you. Your situation is changing. God said the struggle's been broken. Bad habits have been removed right now. Your way with children coming back home says the Spirit of God. God said, you lift me up, I will draw them wherever they are. That's the God that I am. If you don't believe it, look at Moses. Lord said, go to Pharaoh, tell him, let my children go. Then Lord, who shall I say sent me? He said, tell them that I am, that I am, I am that I am. I sent you to Pharaoh. You gotta call your children out of dry places. You gotta call your family back together by the word of your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Somebody been attacked all week long. And the Lord is saying that a attack tra tried to step in your faith in God. Your finances were depreciated. You felt like nothing gonna work out for you. Every way you turn, nothing but trouble. But God says right now, in the midst of worship, your situation is changing. He's in the moment of the windows of heaven. I'm calling a rumbling in the heavens. Release the rain on your situation. He said, the rain is my glory. The rain is my power to do miracles in your situation. Because I am that I am. I'm breaking it. 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 I'm breaking it, says the Spirit of God. I'm breaking it right now in the name of Jesus. I'm breaking it. It has to break. That burden on your shoulder, it has to break. That issue you've been dealing with, it has to break. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Oh, 
Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. God is doing it. God is doing it. God is doing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, God, I'm a city. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, my God, my God. Release it, God. Release it, God. Release your power, God. Release it, release it, release it. In the name of Jesus. Release it, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way right now, God. Have your way. Have your way. Hallelujah. Do it, God. Breakthrough. 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 Right now, God. Breakthrough. Manifest your glory. Manifest your glory. Yes, Lord. Manifest your glory. On your two shadarabasi. Yes, God. Let the weight 
We can feel your presence in this place. It's the weight of your glory. We can feel your presence moving in this place. It's the weight of your glory. We can feel your presence moving in this place. It's the weight of your glory. Oh, cover us, Lord. Cover us in your glory. Come and cover us, Lord. Cover us in your glory. It's the weight of your glory fall let the weight of your glory Just think, I wasn't going to sing. <laughs> I love it when the Holy Ghost takes over. I love it because I wasn't going to sing, but I heard the Spirit of God to sing that song anyway. And I'm glad I obeyed the Spirit of God because somebody just got delivered. Somebody just got set free in their spirit during that time of worship. Amen, amen, glory to God. Come on, give God a hand, praise one more time, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. I'm on fire, y'all, I can't help it, I'm on fire today. Every day has been a fire burning in my heart, hallelujah. I'm not going to stay before you long, but there's a few scriptures I want to go to. I want to go to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12. Then I'm going to jump down to verse 20. No, yeah, 21. Verse 12 and verse 21. Proverbs 18, chapter, verse 12 and verse 21. Just stand in reference to the word, please. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for my pastor. Every second Sunday, give me this opportunity to share the word of God with us. I'm glad to see my cousin, Tim, then snuck in on me, going to text me. <laughs> he says, a Peter Pan Sunday. <laughs> and I said, you must be watching us live. He's, no, nah, I'm closer than that. 
Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. He lived right across the hall from me, too, in my building. Amen. Glad to have him here with us. You got a wife, too. Hopefully one day she'll come, too. But just keep them lifted up in your prayers. They've been going through some financial things themselves, but I believe God is turning it around in his favor. Because if he do it for me, he'll do it for you. Amen. But um, verse 12 says, before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty. But before honor is humility. Amen. So before destruction, you have a haughty heart. So in other words, you invite trouble into your life, being, being stubborn, being rebellious. That's what it's talking about. But he said, if you honor the Lord be, before honor is humility. So if I humble myself before God, that's what it's talking about. He says, God honors me. In verse 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life is in the what? The tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I have a few scriptures I'm going to go to as well, but you can be seated already. But today I want to talk about some of the souls unique and some we all are aware of. And that is the power of words. The power of words. We talked about this on our radio station program this week about the power of words. And it just stuck in my spirit. Because our words have so much power. We have to learn how to be humble. Thank God for pastor's wife and for all of you, God's children. But one thing about God's word is the word cannot activate without a vessel. The word cannot be functional without a vessel. Why? Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Right? So death and life are in the power of this little thing in our mouth that we overlook. But it has great power. Because one thing about the tongue we're going to go to James chapter 3 next. James chapter 3. One thing about the tongue, it has so much influence. It can be encouraging or it can be destructive. And one thing about the tongue is something so little. But yet, we use our tongue to taste with. We use our tongue to talk with. Because without the tongue, you can't talk. And that thing, the word tells us, is very vital organ of the body. And you might think, you know, how is it very vital? Because one thing I found out when I was studying the scriptures this week is every time I get into a position of prayer, there's an audible voice that speaks out to God. That's your voice. But then there's a silent voice that doesn't say a word, but pray inwardly. It's like we're walking in the grocery stores and department centers. I'm praying inwardly. And when the spirit of God compels me to pray in an audible voice, I can pray no matter where I'm at with individuals or even for myself. So you got to have the right attitude when it comes to prayer. Because if your attitude is messed up, you're not going to pray what God says to pray. You're going to pray selfishly. Jesus had a problem with the scribes and the Pharisees. He said because they love to pray in the synagogues and on the street corners to be heard. Guess the key word? Heard. Of their much speaking. Diarrhea of the mouth. Just talking too much. The word ain't going nowhere. Just making noise. Like a clanging seminar, a loud gong. He said, you're just making noise and it's not reaching heaven. So God is saying that when we get into the attitude of prayer, something inside of me realigns itself with the heart of God. So when God tells me to pray, the Holy Spirit inside of me tells me what I need to pray. That's powerful. 
Because without the Holy Spirit, I can't pray. I'm just making noise. Go to James chapter 3 if you have a Bible. James chapter 3. Amen. Begin at verse 1. It says, My brother, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive a greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and is able to bridle his whole body. So what he's saying here is that we don't have to have many masters. There's only one master, Jesus Christ. So if I try to be a master over my brother and sister, God says, I'm going to receive a stricter judgment. But then he goes on and says, he said, many things will offend all. If in any offend, not in word, the same as a perfect man. And we're not perfect. Come on, think about it. You ain't perfect. If you are perfect, he said, you're able to control your tongue. I was thinking of a nursery rhyme. I think it was a nursery rhyme. Something we learned with little children. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, right? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Be careful, little Tom, what you say. Be careful, little Tom, what you say. Be careful what you say. You use your tongue to pray. Be careful, little Tom, what you say. That was the Holy Ghost gave me yesterday. He said, be careful, little Tom, what you say, because we're not careful of the words that come out of our mouth. So I can see my brother, my sister going through a situation in their life. Instead of praying for them, I talk about them. I backstab them. I become a tailbearer. You know what a tailbearer is? A gossiper. Somebody to take his problem, tell her about his problem, tell her about his problem, and it just goes on around. We're going to look a little further. I'm gonna, this is going to be really interesting. Verse 3, it said, Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that, that they may obey us, right? How many of you have seen a horse uh, in a carriage downtown Milwaukee at one time or another? And the driver of that horse, he has a bit in the horse's mouth. Why? To hold his tongue in place. And he can guide him with a bridle whichever direction he wants to go. So he says, and we turn about their whole body. So I can take the horse, put the bit in the mouth, put the bridle on him, and I can say, okay, we're going to the left or we're going to the right. So whichever direction I decide to give the command for the horse to go, the horse is going to obey me. So verse 4 says, behold, also ships, though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet they turn about with a very small hem to my little rudder. Whosoever... The governor listens. So it's talking about a ship, how big they are, big old ships, can have a little bitty rudder. And the ship has no choice but to obey the rudder. So whatever direction the commander steers the ship, that little rudder turns so the ship is going the direction he wants to go. He, I'm, I'm, this, this is all will come together in just a minute. Then he goes on. He said, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts this great things. Behold, like pay attention, look at it. How great a matter, a little fire kindleth. Your tongue can cause a fire. Your tongue can cause great damage in somebody's life just by not obeying the spirit of God. Then he goes on and says, and the tongue is a fire. Ain't that something? Our tongue's a fire. How are you going to use your fire? Are you going to use your fire to offer God praise, to glorify him, to magnify him? Or are you going to use your fire to burn somebody up in the body of Christ? It might be a, a, a poor person on the street corner. You pass by and they filthy and they dirty and they smell real bad. And you talk about them. That's a fire. Because I'm not encouraging them. I'm not praying for them. I'm tearing them down with my words. I'm not going to talk to you. You too dirty. You stink. I don't want you coming around me. You know what I used to do when I was young, young in ministry? When I was married? We used to take a person, the Holy Spirit would tell us off the street, take them to our house and clean them up. 
and let them stay a couple of days and then send them on their way. People say, oh, that's dangerous. That, you crazy. Why do you want to do something like that? Jesus did it. Jesus met with sinners and publicans, the word says, people who were filthy, those who were scummy, who were stinky, who were messed up, who were jacked up. We all were jacked up. And Jesus came into your life. And then he even gave a message. Whatsoever you do to the least of them, you've done it unto me. See how that backs all that up. So the Lord says, you talk to a stranger in the street and give them some money. Are you going to doubt God? No, God ain't giving them nothing. They, they don't need that. But you know what they need. Be careful, little tongue, what you say. But then he goes on. He says, of every kind of beast and birds and serpents uh, uh, of things in the sea is what? Tamed. They're tamed. And has been tamed of mankind. But then he goes on verse 8. But the tongue no man can tame. It is unruly evil. Full of deadly poison. I didn't write this. It's in the book. Your tongue has a malicious destructive power and how you strategically use your tongue either you're going to build the kingdom of God or tear it down and I can guarantee they ain't going to tear down God's kingdom because he said his kingdom is eternal it's everlasting and we have to be careful how we allow the enemy to manipulate us to spread poison in somebody else's life the pastor talked about we talked about our radio program about toxic people. Your talk can make you a toxic person sitting in church. A person you see have an issue in church and you talk about them instead of saying, hey, is anything I can do to help you? You need a ride? Need to go to the store? Need me to pray for you? Anything I can do to make your situation better? We don't do that, though. I go spread poison over here. She spread poison over here. It goes over here. It goes over here. For you know we got a church full of toxic people. And the devil is alive. Because God said we are to shun the very presence of evil. Words are not simply sounds because by passing through the larnix. Words have real power. God spoke worlds into being by the power of his words. You need your situation to change? Start speaking it. You tell your situation, situation, my bank account is on zero, but it ain't going to last forever because my God shall supply all my needs. And when I get in agreement with what God says about me, my finest has to elevate. You know, we do sometimes, we get a, a, a foot ache. We say, oh, this foot is killing me. I got a migraine headache. Oh, it's killing me. Is it really killing you? Are you dying? Are you? Is it really making you that bad when you feel like you're dying? The word says we decay every day and the spirit is renewed every day. But is it really killing you? We have to be careful of the things we speak over ourselves. Because a lot of times we destroy our own purpose. Because I say whatever the mind tells me to say. The word of God says he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the church. When the spirit begins to speak, he's only going to tell you the truth and guide you into all truth. And bring back to the remembrance the things where God has taught you. Glory to God in the highest. Our words have power. 
to destroy or power to build up. We have to be careful. Paul tells us don't let any unwholesome talk proceed out of your mouth. We got to guard our mouths by the Holy Ghost. We got to speak words of life over one another and not death. So even if there is a situation going on in my life, it's not bad as it appears with a natural eye because I look it through the eyes where Jesus sees it. I can see that thing coming to an end. I might be going through that valley of the shadow of the dry bones. I might be going through the valley of the shadow of the death. I might be in a dark place in my life. But the word tells me I'm coming out on the end. Cause I'm pressed toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you today, but there's something that compels me to come into his presence. When my body begins to ache, my mind in confusion, and my heart is broken, something on the inside is compelling me to call on Jesus. The Bible tells me I can look to the hills when come is my help. My help come from the Lord. Lift up your hands, O oh ye gates. He be lifted up the everlasting doors. And the King of glory, he shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. When I call on the King of glory, he shows up just in time. I might have a loved one sick unto death. The doctor done shook their head, done gave up on them, said they ain't gonna die. But I serve a God who told me that I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. I will trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean not to my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge him. He promised me he will direct my path. I don't know about you today. I go through the storms of life. I get persecuted sometimes. I get lied on. I get mistreated. I get talked about. I get scandalized. I get persecuted. But I found out, though you slay me, yet will I trust in him. God will bring you out of your storm. Troubles don't last always. One of these old days, you might be going through. I come to tell you today that God will bring you out victorious. I don't know about you today. I tried the Lord. I found out he is a way maker. He's Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's a lily of the bride and valley. He's a bright and morning star. He's able to do everything I need him to do. I need him to be my money. He'll touch my bank account, cause it overflow. He'll touch my body, cause the anointing to flow. I don't know about you today. I found out that God will do what he promises. If you trust in him, if you trust in him, sometimes I get tired. Sometimes I feel like giving up. Sometimes I toss and turn all night long. But I found out in my tossing and turning, the Lord will begin to speak a word to me. Be not weary in well doing. You shall reap if you faint not. If you faint in a day of adversity, your strength becomes small. But I found out that God is greater who lives in me than he that's in the world. I could call on that name. Call on Jesus. God will show up and deliver me. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. 
Somebody needs a savior today to touch their mind and their heart. I come to let you know today that the Lord is able to reach you right where you are. That the Lord is able with his arms wide open. He's waiting on you to come. Say, here I am, Lord. I need you. He'll come into your life. He'll change your midnight into day. He'll dry the tears from your weeping eye. He'll let you know everything is going to be all right. He'll wrap his arms around you. He'll hold you in the bosom of his love. He'll rock you. He'll rock you. He'll rock you. And let you know everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 He's able. He's able. He's able. Do you believe it today? Is he able? Do you believe it today? You say he's a way maker, but do you really believe it? You say he's a light in darkness. Do you really believe it? You said he's a wonder in my soul. Do you really believe it? I come to tell you, I tried the Lord and I found out that he's all right. He's all right. Jeremiah, say, I love you with an everlasting love. And by my loving kindness, I drew you to myself because I love you. You know what? He loved us so much. They stretched them wide. They hung them high. He died for you and for me. But he didn't stay dead for three days in the grave. On the third day, he rose. He rose. He rose for our salvation. He rose for our redemption. He rose for our healing. He rose for our victory. And all he asked for is just worship me in spirit and in truth. Why don't you stand out of the room? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might be here today. You might be a backslider. You once walked with God. But your habit, it haunted you until it found you. And it pulled you backwards from your love relationship with God. But God says, guess what? I'm married to the backsliders. He said, I will heal you of your backsliding ways. That's how much he loves you. You might be one today. Been in church Sunday after Sunday and never gave your life to Jesus. The Lord says he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but should have everlasting life if you're one of those today I just want you to lift your hands matter of fact everybody lift their hands so you won't feel embarrassed because sometimes we feel embarrassed if the preacher's talking about me I feel embarrassed to raise my hands but one thing God said if you be ashamed on me for men I'll be ashamed to own you before my Father in heaven. But today we're going to make this declaration together. Heavenly Father, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I come to you, Lord, asking you to forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknowingly. Come into my heart and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior from this day forward that I will serve you I will love you I will live for you in Jesus name Amen Amen you prayed that prayer you held accountable today for that declaration you confessed with the words of your mouth and God gonna hold you accountable to that he gonna hold you to that And amen. Amen. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. We're getting ready to go, but I want you to lay hands on yourself. Lay your hands where it hurts, where it hurts. Where it hurts. be bold about it. You got some young people here. Y'all probably need to lay your hands on yourself too. Ooh. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for your people that God, that you will cover their minds and their bodies and their souls. That God, that you will heal them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Give them strength today, God. Remove the pain. Break the stronghold. And God, you will be praised. You will be glorified. But if you never do anything else for me, this is me. God, I'm still satisfied. But God, I'm asking you to do it for my brother and my sister. That you will heal them, God. That ache. Heal them financially spiritually and mentally right now God open up the doors God hallelujah so that they can walk through with peace and have a deeper understanding of your will and your purpose over their life God I pray that this week will turn out to be their best week I pray that this week is going to be better than the weeks that so far pass God because things are getting better even as I pray for your people somebody say my home is blessed my finance is blessed my bills are paid and I thank God for restoring everything connected to me in Jesus name somebody give God praise Now, God, as we get ready to leave this place, but never from your presence, may you rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let the church say amen.